My name is Janice Ray and I am a Georgia writer. I am on the campus of the University of Montana during spring 2014 as the William Kittredge visiting writer in the Environmental Studies Department uh, teaching a graduate class in nature writing. I am reading today in honor of um, the anniversary of the Wilderness Act. I'm reading from William Bartram's book, Travels, The Travels of William Bartram. Uh, in the late 1700s, he uh, did extensive avoid journeys through the southern states. And why this book is important to me and, and to wilderness in general is that he saw the land before a lot of the, uh, a lot of the European changes were cast upon it. Um, it we, we, a lot of the South was settled before, um, before we got to preserve great tracts of land, like in the West. And so it's, it's a beautiful thing when we, when Southerners get to see what their landscape was like. Having completed my Hortus Siccus and made up my collection of seeds and growing roots, the fruits of my late Western tour, and sent them to Charleston to be forwarded to Europe, I spent the remaining part of this season in botanical excursions to the low countries between Carolina and East Florida and collected seeds, roots, and specimens, making drawings of such curious subjects as could not be preserved in their native state of excellence. During this recess from the high road of my travels, having obtained the use of a neat light cypress canoe at Broughton Island, a plantation the property of Honorable Henry Lawrence, where I stored myself with necessaries for the voyage and resolved upon a trip up the Altima Hall. I ascended this beautiful river, on whose fruitful banks the generous and true sons of liberty securely dwell, fifty miles above the white settlements. How gently flow thy peaceful floods, O Altima Hall! How sublimely rise to view on thy elevated shores yon magnolian groves, from whose tops the surrounding expanse is perfumed by clouds of incense, blended with the exhaling balm of the liquid amber, and odors continually arising from circumambient aromatic groves of Elysium, Myrica, Loris, and Bignonia. When wearied with working my canoe against the impetuous current, which becomes stronger by reason of the mighty floods of the river, with collected force pressing through the first hilly ascents where the shores on each side the river present to view rocky cliffs rising above the surface of the water in nearly flat horizontal masses washed smooth by the descending floods and which appear to be a composition or concrete of sandy limestone, I resign my bark to the friendly current, reserving to myself the control of the helm. My progress was rendered delightful by the sylvan elegance of the groves, cheerful meadows, and high distant forests which in grand order presented themselves to view. The winding banks of the river and the high projecting promontories unfolded fresh scenes of grandeur and sublimity. The deep forests and distant hills re-echoed the cheering social lowings of domestic herds. The air was filled with the loud and shrill whooping of the wary sharp-sided crane. Behold on yon decayed defoliated cypress tree, the solitary wood pelican, dejectedly perched upon its utmost elevated spire. He there, like an ancient venerable sage, sets him, himself up as a mark of derision for the safety of his kindred tribes. The crying bird, another faithful guardian, screaming in the gloomy thickets, warns the feathered tribes of approaching peril and the plumage of the swift sailing squadrons of Spanish curlews gleam in the cerulean skies. Thus secure and tranquil, and meditating on the marvelous scenes of primitive nature, as yet unmodified by the hand of man, I gently descended the peaceful stream, on whose polished surface were depicted the mutable shadows from its pensile banks, whilst myriads of finny inhabitants sported in its pellucid floods.